weekend racing. It's time to recap it. And who better to do it than Michael New Magic? Two bros slash pros who cover the highs and lows of racing around the globe on every one of the shows. Real fans look forward to these guys in their last thoughts because they know they're not talking out of their royal ascot. What they say makes sense. So ladies and gents, sit back and relax as Blinkers Off presents The Magic Mike Show, where you hear the experts speak The Magic Mike Show, tune into the show every week The Magic Mike Show, you can trust the show is the bomb Because it's being brought to you by RacingDudes.com What's up everybody, I'm Magic And I'm Mike And this is the Magic Mike Show episode 400, Mr. Salmage, god damn it Huzzah! <laughs> Took about five seconds. Good job. Way to go, buddy. <laughs> I was so happy that my mic was not muted. I just was, I, I was like, yeah, the mic's working. He heard me. We're good. Awesome. And I fucked it up. Okay. Gotta celebrate the little things, man. We had the long intro too. Bringing it back for number 400. Listen, the people asked for it. So I, I went mute and then did Mike just freeze? Yeah, Mike just froze. So already we're hitting uh, hitting a couple of really good ones. So I, I'm uh, still yeah. Hey, b- before we get any further, cheers to you. Uh, the last of the Casamigos tequila is uh, it's, that's not all tequila. Don't worry, that's uh, it's also it's also fresca, a little grapefruit, a little grapefruit. I, I wasn't I wasn't worried. I was excited if that was going to be all tequila. No, that may have actually just well, but it's got the Del Mar logo on there, and the reason I bring that up not because we're doing Del Mar, as you can see in the description in the title, we are doing Saratoga as the late pick five on Saturday, but uh, I am going to be at Del Mar on Saturday doing the simulcast show with good friend John Lee. So. Uh, I uh, got that officially officialized today, and I'm officially excited to go down there. So uh, if you're playing Del Mar, tune into that one. That'll be at 1 o'clock Pacific time on Saturday. But, Mike, we don't care about that. We got Saratoga to worry about first. Are you excited about it? Yeah, man, we got we got a lot to talk about here. Lots to unpack, as Magic would say, for episode number 400, plus a Q&A throughout it. So if you ever got any questions, throw it out there. And we got three left at Toga. We just kicked off Del Mar. I'm going to be yeah, a little bit distracted, but it's all good. Let's roll. <laughs> yeah, the uh, – yeah. Quiet, quiet day in horse racing today. It's not like anybody's trying to overshadow us in our celebrating Magic Mike show. Let's get into it. The late pick five is Saratoga on Saturday. Uh, what is that? August 20th. Let's get going, buddy. Riders up. Mark with the comment that I think that's the nice thing anybody said to me in 400 episodes. No one enjoys to drink more while on live TV than magic. You are the modern version of Norm from Cheers. Hashtag spirit animal. Hashtag Cheers is my second favorite show of all time behind Frazier, which spawned off of Cheers. I love Norm. He's the guy that just, he's got his own seat at the bar. When he walks in, everybody knows who he is. I just want to be like that someday. Maybe not a bar, maybe the horse track. Hey, magic's here. All right. What about a bar at a horse track? How about that? Like, I like that bar at Santa Anita that's right in between the paddock and going out to the Perfect. front. I would happily be a regular there if I was somewhere in Arcadia. Yeah, but you get your, but, you know, you get your one seat. It gets nice and fitted to your ass. Uh, it's pretty good. Anyways, hey, we got to talk about Saratoga here. The first race of the uh, late pick five on Saturday, August 27th. Race seven is an exciting maiden special weight for eight two-year-old Colts. And I say exciting. We could potentially have a, a superstar in this race. We don't know. We got to see him debut first. But the number five echo again for Steve Asmussen, uh, a son of Gun Runner. Uh, the breeding says this horse should pop early at two. Uh, workouts are off the charts. I almost signaled this horse. I didn't, but he's definitely my top pick. What about you? Yeah, I have this one on top as well. I'm going to try and I'm going to I'm going to spread a little bit here because I do think there's some other talent in here. And look. Asmussen has just not been as good early as you'd expect with some of these two-year-olds this year. I mean, you look at his his, uh, his trainer stats when you're looking at, at DRF, he's 11% out of his last 377 starters, which is a 95-cent ROI for first-time starters. Not something you'd expect to see from Asmussen, who is one of those guys who you can kind of count on to get some of these horses ready to roll early. Now, this could be a don't-fall-off Joel ride. Like, that is definitely a possibility here where he could go out and just not get caught at all. So, I am a little bit concerned in that sense, and these gun runners have been popping. 20% first-time start uh, hit rate right now, so you got to respect the five. But there's some really interesting horses in here that I think are a little bit of a price, so I'm going I'm to take a couple swings here. The, uh, what, you know what I should have done? Too late, because this episode has already started. Um <laughs> Should have done Magic Mike show bingo for this, just to see how many times we can, like, Magic's mic is muted, or Mike's computer freezes, or 
Uh, that that won't be the penultimate mistake. Jo- you Joel, don't fall off. Like there's a uh, <laughs> bell curve. You know, there's all sorts of isms we could hit. Uh, violence whispered. You know, there's all sorts of good ones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no relation to the uh, to the Echo family, I believe, but uh, the same connections still. Um, let's. All right. So I went two deep here. You, you hit on all the, the highlights. By the way, Rosario. Um, this year at Saratoga is four for ten riding for Asmussen. It's interesting. He's zero for four on first time starters. Only one of them has even hit the board. So uh, keep that in mind. None of them were, were heavily favored or lauded like Echo again, though. So uh, the second horse for me, and I believe you used as well, uh, the number two good news rocket for Bill Mott. Uh, the logo is covering up there. The odds are eight to one on this horse. Sold for $700,000 uh, as a two-year-old after breezing a furlong in 10 and one. That is fast no matter how old you're. Now the sales, the breezes, they're supposed to do that. They're, they're meant to do that fast, but... Um, you know, this horse does have a lot of speed there. Run happy, not terrible as a debut. Sire is 10%. But from the dam side, she won all the dam herself won all or, or won her first four starts. They were all at age three. Uh, the siblings just won for nine on debut. But the one that did win is a half brother named Bulletin. You remember him? Breeders Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint Champion. So there is potential to win early here. I do like the mix with the run happy. Bill Mott's got two entered here and his better or more more likely of the two riders to keep riding with him junior alvarado is going to be here on the two did i miss anything for you no i mean look that sales price really stands out seven hundred thousand dollars for run happy who again has been been pretty good here 10 percent with juvenile sires um this is one of those where i feel like you have to include it especially this is the last horse on my ticket for me in this race um but it feels like this one could pop for mott who when he has a horse right that horse can run off the screen. We saw that yesterday with a 12 to one shot winning a or 13 one shot winning the first maiden races to kick out the pick six. I actually like the eight a little bit more, the other Mott classic legacy. And I think it's really interesting that you get Jose Ortiz up in this spot. Uh, this horse's workouts don't jump off the page to you. But this is a homebred uh, out of from into mischief. So obviously the, you got the, the early pedigree, the winterly pedigree in that front. And this one, whenever you get Jose up, specifically with Mott, they click off at 26% at Saratoga, 22% overall, both of them positive ROIs. It seems like when Mott calls on specific people, see Rosario, see Ortiz, the horses run. And this is one where I, I, you feel like this horse is going to run. The two's workouts were with the Phillies, Padma, uh, who ran, I believe it was second the other day, behind that one horse who was at a price, an uppercase, uh, who was a, a very expensive, very touted first-time starter that ended up not faring so well. Um, so they they didn't, the workout mates didn't run huge their first time out. Classic Legacy, to me, is just one of those more under-the-radar mots. I, I will take the eight over the two here, but I'm going to use them both. The fourth horse I included was the four-horse bat flip. Uh, this is one for Pletcher. you got Ired Ortiz, who keeps the mount. Everything went wrong. Like that's just the bottom line in that first race. It's a three hundred fifty thousand dollars son of Curlin, and that that horse didn't break well. Kind of lugged out at the start. Was seven wide. Tried to make up some ground. Was facing some pretty good other horses there. <laughs> first time, uh, first time out. Blazing Sevens ends up winning by six and a half. The second place finisher, who ends fourth by second, ends up coming back and winning out of that spot. I think there was some talent in that race. I think everything possible went wrong for Batflip. I think you could see a big time improvement second start. We've seen a lot of second-time starters winning these maiden special weights, even with some of these highly touted first-time starters. That's a uh, $350,000 son of good magic to you, good sir. Don't you dare besmirch good magic. Who is the son of Kerwin? So I knew where you were going with that. Uh, Batflip's a horse that Sir Tucker Slim met. He was in the backside vlog, I think, more than once, actually. He's been featured in there. Um, yeah, that debut wasn't great. I uh, don't I don't love the fact that the horse that I first work out of that was on the turf. Having a couple of young horses with Pletcher, I've learned that when that happened, that's usually because he went, well, that wasn't what we were looking for in the dirt. Let's see if maybe they like the turf a little bit better. And so when they kind of guess with that, that flip also, it doesn't show up on here, but has been entered in turf races before and scratched. He was entered as part of a couple of entries. So it's not, I, I get very odd signals about this horse. As far as the eight classic legacy, you forgot a big factor. He's a half to art collector, uh, won the grade one Woodward. But I think that uh, the eight classic legacy, uh, talk to me in four months when it's um, when we're doing the dude's fantasy draft. I think this is a great horse for the dude's fantasy draft. When we're looking farther down the line, this feels like we're getting him started. We're, we have confidence in him. We're bringing him to Saratoga. But I, I don't love him in this specific position here. Well, it's interesting you say. I, I, I feel the same way about the six and the seven here. Spinazar and Game Changer, I think, are both two-turn horses. And so I, I'm interested in both of them in this race. 
to see how they perform, but I don't want to bet them here. But both yep. of them, if either runs well or either shows early speed or is able to to make up some ground after spinning his wheels early, I'm interested in both the six and the seven coming out of this race into a either one turn mile at Belmont or, or one turn mile at Aqueduct or two turns somewhere. I, I think they both want more distance here. Yeah, and this I mean this very well could be a key race. You know, there's usually one or two a year for the two year olds that you look at as three year olds and go, holy shit! Like, I mean, last year it was Churchill Downs had a race that Epicenter. Uh, didn't even win. It was his debut, but there were so many horses from that race that, you know, you could then move forward and say, oh yeah, they, they could hear their uh, Olympiad, the race that he won. And then we didn't see him again for seven months. That was a Saratoga race. So uh, lots of things to like there. And I agree with you. I think uh, the six and the seven, the two sugar horses going to turns, see what they can do. Uh, let's move on. The second leg of the late pick five, Saturday, August 20th, Saratoga race eight is the grade two Lake Placid stakes, eight, three-year-old fillies going a mile and a 16th on the inner turf. Uh, at first, when I looked at this, I was like, God, there's four Chad Brown horses in here. Uh, there's an Appleby who's the nine to five favorite. Can I just hit the all button? And I tried to figure out a way to hit the all button. I, I like the nine to five favorite too much. And it, it ticket structure wise, you would have just rightfully ripped me apart. So I didn't do it. Uh, where'd you go on top? I'm singling with the moonlight. I'm not you even are, messing okay. around here. Look, I, I, I'm not going to single spoiler alert later in the this, this sequence. And if I'm not singling later in the sequence, I've got a single here in my mind. So I'm going to single with the Moonlight so I can cover a couple other races because I'm going to go deep in the last. I obviously spread a little bit there in the first. And I just think with the Moonlight's the best horse. I think it's really that simple. I love the fact that we're coming off, uh, coming back off for two weeks here, uh, getting right back out to the track after a nice victory. Look, I could make a case for Del uh, Dolce Zell. I could make a case for consumer spending. I could make a case for Eminent Victor. I could make a case for Cansey. I just think with the moonlight's better than them. And when it just comes down to it, I think that they're all going to give me a better price on with the moonlight. And I think more people are going to choose to spread because you've got four Browns in here, because you've got a, a nice Clement in here. Like I, I feel like this is one of those spots where because this is a deep race, you're going to get value singling with the moonlight, whereas you would not usually get that. Uh, returns two weeks after the Saratoga Oaks that she won very impressively. I uh, thought she was the best horse by far in that race. I thought she was the best horse in the Belmont Oaks, but even though she didn't win, the Cullet got her. But, uh, you know, she you look at the short rest and be like, well, it was just two weeks uh, after the Saratoga Oaks. But she won almost won the Belmont Oaks after running four weeks earlier and then shipping across the Atlantic. Like, to me, that would have taken more out of her than just, just sit in your barn for two weeks and we're going to run you again against lesser horses uh, i don't know like did, did appleby look at what he beat in that in the saratoga oaks and go this is the best chad brown has and there's a grade two coming up let's just stick around and see what happens well it, it makes a ton of sense you go back and you look too i mean with the moonlight broke her maiden off two weeks rest she came out one run race came right back broke her maiden the next time start so it's not like she doesn't have experience oh, yeah. doing this appleby does this much more often than a lot of the u.s <laughs> trainers and you hit the nail on the head she just beat better than this I'm not sure why she wouldn't improve in this spot. I love that we draw the rail. I like Saya's on her. Like this, this all makes sense to me as to why with the moonlight's going to be able to run away from this field as well. And if we, if you, if you can lock in nine to five, I'm all about that nine to five right now. So if, if this, you may actually be able to get fixed odds in a lot of different places for this race. This would be one of those that I'm looking forward to see if I can get anything near nine to five uh, before they actually uh, start taking money on this race. Charlie Appleby, my favorite trainer in the world. Six for his last 11 in North America with horses attempting repeat wins. That's 55%. That's pretty good. You got Luis Saez taking over for William Buick. That's pretty good. Um, God, I just couldn't do it, Mike. I couldn't single her. I, I wanted to, and then I was like, I can't can't do it. There's a couple of Chad Browns I like too much. By the way, Marla Kay, thank you so much. Huge supporter. Uh, giving us a lot of love in the chat. Really appreciate that. Um, thank you so much for that. We really appreciate you. Uh, I'm going to use four horses here. I'm going to use Dolce Zell. I, you know, when the Lake George stakes, there was a debate afterwards in the racing dudes group uh, where Aaron and Jared thought that uh, Eminent Victor was the better horse. And I thought Dolce Zell was. And I said, the fact that she didn't even have room until the eighth pool, I read barely even asked her and only needed her to get what she needed to be Eminent Victor. I thought that was a much better race than the nose gap that it shows there and if you scratch off the edge wood when you can very easily argue she hated the churchill turf like most chad brown horses did she should be a lot shorter than six to one coming into this race so i think i'm getting a great value on the horse that i read is choosing to ride consumer spending for me i thought that the belmont oaks effort was better than look she just had too much to do manny franco chad brown keeps praising how well manny franco has been riding we've seen it uh for our own eyes how good manny franco continues to be 
consumer spending is three for fourth of distance. Broker made an over this exact course and set up here. So uh, for me, those are the two Chad Brown horses I used. Any comments either way? I don't know how you use Dolce Zell and you don't use Eminent Victor. That would be my only comment. I, I agree with you that consumer spending is the one you have to use from Brown. And I agree with you that Howdy is the one you don't have to use from Chad Brown. I, I feel like Eminent Victor and Dolce Zell are just so close. And the price at 5-1 to one and 6-1 to one are actually not bad if you're going to go start spreading around a little bit here. So I'm surprised you use Dolce Zell and not Eminent Victor, especially with Pratt up, man. You love you sell some Flavian Pratt. You got to get him, got to get him a victory here. He's actually killing it now at Saratoga. Because Dol- I thought Dolce Zell is the better horse and beat her by a lot more than a no. Like she had a lot more that she could have won by than a no. She, yeah, she had a dream trip up the rail, but she had a dream trip up the rail that she couldn't press go on until the final eight and Victor was all out to try and keep up and do it. So I thought that of the two of them, one was vision impressive. One wasn't. So especially when I'm getting six to one over him, I'll take him. I get, I get your reasoning for this specific case. I just have a very strong opinion. I did use the seven Kinesi as my last one on here, the 12 to one price. You know, I, I don't think this horse is necessarily going to go gate to wire, but Castellano showed that this horse has got tactical speed. If, if he reads that this is going to be a 25 and change 50 and change, He's going to pull a, uh, Julian Le Peru and go straight to the front and try and take him gate to wire like uh, when she won before. Uh, I think that she's got a lot of talent. She's got a lot of ability. She beat contemporary art on debut. That's a horse that Chad Brown has for Bobby Flay. Uh, uh, got fourth, I think fourth in the Saratoga Oaks, but set the pace in that race. So it might be too much too soon. She, she is improving with each start. Might be better to use her underneath, but I think 12 to 1, the tactical speed, and if nobody goes to the front, she might wire it if she wants. She would be my tournament horse in this spot. I, I love that 12 to 1 price. It, it, like that race actually was a very good race. I was in the grandstands for that race that day. There were some talented horses running behind her. She was able to just get to the front and take a gate to wire. I don't think the mile and 16th is an issue. I think that she's going to be able to sit close to the pace, which is a key in this spot. Um, I, I also don't hate the 1 7 exact cold. If you want to try and get past all the three, Chad, all the four Chad Browns and get some value into the exact, I think that's a good way to play it as well. It is a big step forward, though. This is a big ask coming out of that allowance race, jumping all the way up here. I, I Like I said, tournaments, it makes a ton of sense, especially at that price, especially if you like with the Moonlight as much as I do, and you don't want to play with the Moonlight in tournaments because of the price. Yeah. All of a sudden, Kinesi makes a lot of sense from that perspective. And I don't hate the idea. Look, if I, if I ended up going more than one deep here, I was going to go three with – three deep with the one three seven. So I, I would have ended up three deep here in that spot. If I had stretched past the one, yes, I like eminent Victor more than Dolce Zell. Um, but I just, to me with the moonlight is a standout and, and, and I can't quite quit secret oath, which we'll get to in a minute. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, yeah. Hey, listen, before we move on, I, I do want to remind everybody, this is episode 400 as part of it. Uh, I mean, this is usually probably every show, but definitely today, if you've got any uh, random questions, doesn't have to be about horse racing. Drop them in. Mike and I said we'd do them between races, and nobody's dropped them in there yet. So we're running behind. Throw us some funny questions that we can answer as we go through here. The third leg, Mike, of the Late Pick 5, Saturday, August 20th at Saratoga. Race 9, this is the Smart and Fancy Stakes. Um, we're going to discount the also eligible here, the MTO. It looks like we're going to be on the turf. We've got nine fillies and mares, four and up, sprinting five and a half furlongs on the outer course. And I cannot believe this, Mike. Caravelle is four to one. Do we get that on race day? Do we get four to one on Caravel on race day? You haven't looked at my ticket, have you? No, I haven't. I'm not using her. (laughs) That would not have been a bingo square. You would not have seen that one coming. You would have thought I was going to single her here. Uh, I went back and watched her last three races since she started turf sprinting with Brad Cox, and I'm wildly unimpressed. And I just... there She has the numbers to do it, and I've been high on this horse, especially coming out of that synthetic effort, four back. She gets bet too much and she doesn't run well enough. And I just, I cannot go back to the well here, especially when I watch a couple of the horses trips specifically out of that last race. Caravelle, yes, is going to be a trip horse. A lot of people are going to say, oh, she had a ton of trouble. That's why you can throw that last race out. Go ahead and bet her back. I get that. I understand. Even that win two back wasn't that impressive. And I just, this is, this is a tough field. And I think there's a couple in here that can get here. I like go back and watch Miss J McKay's trip in that race who almost won and would have won if she didn't have to check twice in the stretch. Uh, I, I think she is sitting on a big one. So I'm going to put Miss J. McKay, the six horse on top here, uh, four to one out of the Clement barn. And this is kind of wild. I'm going to use two of the three Clements and not use the Rosario one. Wow. I still can't yeah. believe you didn't use it. Okay. We're going to come back to Caravelle in a second. I will say I went too deep here and Miss J. McKay is the other horse that I used. And because of what you said, that trip last out, 
She should have won. And when she gets a clean trip, she is absolutely lethal. She is lethal as anyone in this field um, if she gets a clean trip. That's a big if, but it is Irad at Saratoga. Uh, you got to feel like last time out, he just want to make some amends for it because he knew he had a good horse there, gets the mount back. Um, Caravelle, if you scratch off the caress stakes last out, and, and she was on the rail, seriously trip compromised down there. Um, she's nine for 11 sprinting against her own gender. She's five for five sprinting against her own gender at five or five and a half for longs. I, I can't quit her. And Louise size is hopping aboard. If we were still going to be with Tyler Gaffleone, who has been struggling this summer, uh, listen, getting married, he's got a bigger priorities in Saratoga this summer. I get it. We understand we're married men. Problem is it didn't work out for Caravel, but Louise size picks up the mount. Uh, to me, it, it I will say, if she can't get the job done with Luis Saez, I'm with you. I'm up. But this, I'm a, I can't quit her yet. I don't love the posts. I'm not sure about the trip. Like, there, there's just – and none of those last three races win this race. That's my other big issue. And I, I agree with you. She's taking money. She's going to take money on Saturday. Um, and it, so if I'm singling a 9-5 to five favorite and I, I'm not getting kind of crazy in the other feature race – I got to figure out how I'm going to inject value into this thing. And to me, it's leaving Caravelle out here and, and seeing if you can find a, a way to beat her. And I don't think that this sets up very well for her. I, I like she's going to be three or four wide. She's going to be close to a hot pace. It, to me, I want horses that are going to be coming off it a little bit. I mean, the two horse Finette is going, the three horse Robin Sparkles is going, the four Sarah Harper is going. And all of a sudden, Caravelle is five wide. Like I, it's just, it's going to be tough from that nine post to be able to make the move that she needs to make. When I have horses that I like, like Miss J. McKay, who's going to be further back and probably saving some ground and then trying to find a way through, and I get we could get stopped. I understand that. I like a legal smile who's shown the ability, so seven's on my ticket, to be able to sit close to the pace and close. I think a legal smile trips out here. And if she is good enough, she's going to be able to get the job done sitting right behind that first slide of speed. And then I can't quit Lady Edith because she has been so darn close to me. Close at huge prices the last two races and improved. First start to second start in the Kamat Barn. If she takes another step forward, she's the best horse in this field. And that's kind of wild to say because she's been a bigger price the last two times. But at 8-1, to one, and I think you get every bit of that on race day, makes a ton of sense here. You know, I did look at uh, the 7 Illegal Smile quite a bit. Um, you know, it's interesting that, you know, we both like Miss J. McKay. She's your top pick. So I read leaving Jose jumping aboard. Uh, you're you're still taking the horse that Irad's going to be on. Um, I, you know, she is, especially at this distance, if you discount her debut when, at this, which is at this distance and she missed the board, uh, the other time that she missed the board, uh, she missed second by a head and a neck. She missed winning by a half length. So you can count that as hitting the board in all six starts other than her debut. She's very good. I don't know that she's good enough to beat all of the horses in this field, but she's definitely has that chance. You're getting a good price eight to one, uh, lady Edith for me. Mm, mm, I kind of wish Rosario was on this one. Don't you yeah. a little bit? Oh, yeah. Trust me, I do. And I like and I go back and I look at Too Sexy, who Rosario is going to ride the five horse here and uh, was the favorite last time against Miss J. McKay and, and just kind of didn't have the best trip. It's two for three at the distance, one for two at Saratoga. I could make a case that this one's going to be that good. The problem with Too Sexy is we're five years old and there is one race that he, that she has run the entire time that wins this race. And that's the race three back, uh, the Floral Park, where, where it wins it uh, against a field that's not nearly as good as this. So I, I can't really point to a reason why Two Sex is going to take a big step forward. And I can't point to any races but that one that is good enough to get a job, the job done here. A legal smile, first start later in the four-year-old season, sort of second-ish off the layoff because of that June start. Lady Edith, third start in four-year-old season, third start in the form cycle, both four years old. I can make an argument that the seven and the eight could both have the potential to take a pretty decent step forward here, where the five, the six, and the nine are kind of spinning their wheels at this point from, from being coming better horses. Well, and to your point also about Too Sexy's big win coming, the, the one win on her form that wins this race being three back. Once you hit about the second week of October till the end of December, for me, I discount any big effort, any big win you might have had because the best horses in the country are all aiming for the Breeders' Cup in their divisions. And if you're winning a race like the Floral Park, yeah, there were eight horses that nobody thought was good enough to go to the Breeders' Cup turf sprint so, uh, or, or to go to other bigger races other different spots. So, yeah, you know, if that's your one spot, whenever I see it happening in the fall like that, it always makes me a little bit nervous here. Uh, let's move on, Mike. We've got the two races left to go here. Do we have any questions yet? You don't, you don't answer Miranda's all... question? I was just going to say, we just got one here. Question for Mike, for no, Dr. It's... Miranda, why do you hate Tyler Gaffley so much? Well, this is this is, this is is asked at the wrong person. 
You literally just slandered the man with Saez taking over the mount for him on the nine horse caravel. I said that he had bigger priorities this summer than he horse said he wasn't racing. riding well, and that's why he's he only at, he's at nine percent. Saez is at sixteen percent this meet. Okay, so Gaffley owns at nine percent. Yeah, Gaffley owns at nine percent this meet. That's your at anchor, right? Saratoga. That's why. You know, I love Gaffleyon in in Kentucky. I like Gaffleyon in Florida. Gaffleyon in New York. You know, he can get the job done, but he's not. He's not. He is the best rider at Gulfstream through parts of those meets, right? He's the best rider when he goes to Kentucky in a lot of those meets. He's the sixth best rider, seventh best rider, arguably eighth or ninth in this colony. I mean, so it's just it's it's like Steve Asmussen when he comes to Saratoga. I don't. I have no interest in his turf horses. When he's down in Texas, give me all the Asmussen turf horses you want. That's fine. It's it's all about picking. It's where people succeed is what I'm most interested in, not necessarily uh, how they ride. Uh, listen, the one person who does really like Tyler Gaffleyon, aside from his mother, is Miss Cassie Edwards, his new wife. So that's all that matters. Right now, <laughs> Daryl says, can we pivot and handicap the feature at Saratoga? Yes, we can. If you mean the Saratoga feature at Saratoga at Saturday, uh, that's race 10, the grid one Alabama stakes. Uh, surprisingly, drew a field of seven. I, we only get four for the race before five, but uh, uh, I don't remember. But we got seven for this one. Going a mile and a quarter on the dirt here, three old Phillies. It's the epic rubber match between Secret Oath, the Kentucky Oaks winner, and Nest, who won the CCA Oaks last time out. Uh you said you couldn't quit Secret Oath. Did you just chalk out and go four seven here? Well, technically, it's not chalking out because the three is seven to two. And that's an awful Holy morning shit line. She is. Yeah, <laughs> so, I'm just throwing that out there. Um, hey, real quick for Daryl. Look, Daryl, I like the three and the six here. I think the seven's the price. So I'll, I'll give you some love here on an episode four hundred. Um, I, I, I knew have, what you meant, Daryl. <laughs> I believe I have the three in the tournament. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I'm three and six here. I like the seven a little bit. Uh, I, I don't love. I think it's the four is the favorite that I'm not overly into. And that, yeah, uh, Dream Central, I think, is getting way over bet off of that. She went over She's a Mia last time. So, uh, yeah, for me, three, six, seven in the uh, the feature at Saratoga. In this feature at Saratoga, look, ne- Secret Oath did everything that Secret Oath did not want to do. People were going to remember the CCA Oaks and just Secret Oath getting absolutely blasted by Ness. And I fully understand that. Secret Oath had no interest in uh, trying to chase Nest and then pass Nest. She didn't want to do the dirty work. She wants someone else to do the dirty work. And today, other people will do the dirty work, or this Saturday, other people will do the dirty work, and Nest will have not as easy of a time. It's basically a workout up front with Secret Oath wide chasing her the whole time. Lucas also said Secret Oath wasn't fit enough for that race, and I believe him because he's had that problem at Saratoga with some of his horses the first time over this track. I think she's going to come back better. The workout reports are significantly better on her than they were leading into that race. And the setup is a lot better. I mean, you're going to get you're going to get other pace up front earlier and Secret Oath be able to run into that. That's what she needs. I think Nest is going to win or is the most likely winner. But I think the price on Secret Oath is going to be significantly higher than it should be. That's fair. That's a fair way of looking at it. You're you're getting a lot more value than you think is uh what what you should be getting for. Yeah I, I agree, spot. yeah, I agree with the prices last time in this race. Ness went off at about 90 cent on the dollar favorite. Secret Oath went about off at around a buck twenty dollars as, as a second choice. I think that's about where the difference between them. A 25% gap, not a eight times gap, which is what you're currently seeing in the morning line. I listen, I respect Secret Oath if if, if D Wayne Lucas wins this. Aaron said it perfectly in the preview, which you can find at youtube.com slash racing dudes. Uh, if, you know, your heart roots for D Wayne Lucas and for Secret Oath here, but I singled Nest. A lot of people are going to single Nest. She's one to two on the morning line. Um, I, the, to me, the only reason she lost the Kentucky Oaks is that she got stuck in a, a big battle inside and between horses in a field of, you know, 14 where nine of them probably didn't belong. And, you know, Louis Saez very wisely took Secret Oath the overland route and avoided all that. And that, you know, kept her big long stride moving. I don't think Ness gets caught that up in something like that again here. Uh, you talked about CCA Oaks, that Secret Oath had to do all stuff that she didn't want to. Ness didn't usually want to do that either. The only other time you saw Ness have a running line, running line like that is when she debuted. Uh, ever since then, she likes to sit behind horses a little bit. I just yeah. love her too much. I, I, ever since the Ashland Stakes, if you remember my reaction to her winning the Ashland, I love this filly, love her to death. So, uh, yeah, I'm seeing her. I, I don't disagree with anything you said, except that she didn't have it her all her own way last time. Every horse would like to go gate to wire. 
there's absolutely no horse on the planet that wouldn't like to go gate to wire. Okay. It's just, you have to be in the right position or the setup to go gate to wire. You'd always rather be up front if you're, if you're comfortable with those fractions. And she was very comfortable with those fractions. And so I would, I would much rather be the horse setting the pace than the one too wide pressing the entire time. That makes your job a lot harder from the, from the secret oath perspective, especially when secret oath has never been that close to those type of fractions. Nest has, has tracked those type of fractions. Secret Oath has never tracked like a length behind a 111. That's just not what she wants to do. And so, and if she didn't, they go 113 and there's, she's got zero chance of passing her. So I get why it happened. To me, this is much more complex because you have more horses. And it's not as open and shut of a case as one to two is. And, and if you can get around Nest here, and I think Secret Oath is the horse to get around Nest with, all of a sudden the value of this sequence goes up exponentially. I uh, got a phone call while we were on the uh, while you we were talking there. Sadler's Joy says he does not want to go gate to wire ever. It's not true. I bet if Sadler's Joy could wire a field going one fifteen, he would have a blast doing it. Sadler's Joy would say no to wiring a race against a donkey pulling a cart. That's definitely not true. Do you know why? Sadler's Joy is a full of the Wolfie's Dynagos who loves going gate to wire. So how could if they're brothers? They they clearly both have the same idea here in their heads. If, well, if you need any fast. further proof, no further proof needed that genetics really just means shit in horse racing. The woman is like, it's a wire, and one says, nope, I'm going to wait until he's two miles in. Uh, <laughs> hey, here's a good question before we do move on from this race. Uh, what place would Ness get if she were in the Traverse, uh, looking at the field of, assuming we got about nine right now? Third. Yeah, I I think she hits the board. I don't know that she uh, maybe she, she hasn't faced she hasn't faced epicenter. <laughs> That's I mean, a big she, one. She's third or fourth in my mind. Yeah. Epicenter and Arturo's one two. Right, they're they're both hitting the board. I think they're the best two horses in the race. Um, Zanyata actually is a better argument than Sadler's Joy Mark. Way to go. That's that's a good one. That Zanyata would she would still do it if they went slow enough. She would love doing it. It wouldn't be a hard for her to do. But generally, she's just too slow early. Um, yeah, I, I think she finishes third or fourth. I think I think Arturus and, and Epicenter are my one-two going into the Travers, and I think Zanin is the horse that could beat her for third, or she beats Zanin and ends up running third. Yeah, definitely. Good, I mean, she definitely would put in a great effort. We think she uh, – but this is also the most competitive Travers that I've ever remembered looking at, which is not that much but uh, since 2016, but still. Uh, Daryl asked, when did the podcast start? It was 2018, the grade three Ohio Derby, lone sailor losing to Axelrod. That's – that's yeah, when man. we started. Never forget that one. Um, here we go. This is a good question before we move on, Mike. Thoughts on pineapple? I don't know your answer to this. Thoughts on pineapple on pizza? Shadi wants to know. Got to be the right mood for it. I will eat a Hawaiian pizza, but it, okay. it, it's got to be, I got to be in the right mood. And, and generally it's got to be with bacon, with Canadian bacon if I'm going to do it. Um, I, I just the pineapple, pure pineapple pizza, not a big thing, but I actually like pineapple cooked. Like I like grilled pineapple. I think mm -hmm. that can, can pair very well, specifically with some fish. So uh, to me, pineapple is a good thing to heat up and, and to cook through. Pizza, it's got to be in the right mood, though, because I'm generally just a pepperoni pizza guy. Like, I'll eat cheese pizza. I'll eat pepperoni pizza. I can do all the toppings. I like pizza with all the toppings. But if you're really going for my heartstrings, it's either cheese or pepperoni. But then there are some days where I'll add on. But I will tell you this. None of this barbecue chicken stuff. No, I do not replace my pizza <laughs> sauce with barbecue, with barbecue sauce on there. That is disgusting. It is not meant to be that way. I uh, I will agree with you on the barbecue chicken. Uh, Hawaiian pizza is the number one order in our household. So I'm a meat lover's guy. Um, but if you know that, that and she loves the veggies. So we meet in the middle with ham and pineapple, I guess. So it works out there. And then I guess we'll count this a, a side note. What beer with pizza? For me, it's the one in my hand. <laughs> Yeah, I don't have a big beer pizza the combo action. I, it really, like Magic said, whatever's the one in hand. Generally, it's a lighter beer. If I'm going yeah, like chicken Pilsner. wings, I want an IPA. Then I, I go to a little bit of a heavier Ooh. beer with chicken wings, yeah. That, that's good. Yeah, I was going to say, I really like a good Pilsner with uh, – I don't mind Miller Lite, but I, I like a good craft Pilsner um, with pizza. That's a good one. Yeah, barbecue yeah. sauce on pizza is nasty. Yeah. Uh, also, the same for white pizzas. No, nope, you can miss me with that too. No, it's called it's called cheesy bread or garlic bread. It's not called white pizza. That's it. Hey, there we go. <laughs> and, and it's definitely and it's definitely not a sandwich. Fifth and final leg of Saratoga's late pick five <laughs> Saturday, August twentieth, race eleven. Mike, it's not made in New York breads. I don't know what to do. They're thirty five Kramers, non winners of three lifetime, going a mile on the sixteenth on the outer turf course. Uh, I mean, Aviano is the favorite at three to one. You can understand why, but this is a little bit of a mess of a race. Where'd you go? <laughs> 
Yeah, look, I went through the four wicket fast on top. Uh, so horse for Hori Abreu, that last race was actually pretty good. Good governance, eyes on target, pretty good horses. It just wasn't a great trip. It was two or three wide on both turns. You, you can't be doing that on Saratoga going a mile right now. It just doesn't work out well for you. I thought the horse ran well enough. Uh, we're dropping in for a tag here, second off the layoff. Abreu's uh, getting some winners home right now. So I went with a four on top, but I felt like you could go absolutely price hunting in this spot. I'm playing three horses that are over. Uh, I think at least 15 to one, maybe 10 to one. Yeah, I went four deep here and I went with the two short prices and then I went with two bombs and I didn't even realize that until I saw the prices come up here. But you, it's really, this is a mess of a, of a field. You're trying to find horses uh, to go with. I, I'm with, I like the four wicked fast, you know, dropping back to claiming first time since being tagged for 50K nine months ago. Um, you know, this feels like a lot of horses in here feel like aggressive moves for Trying to get their win. I did use Aviano. I don't know if you did. It, I didn't feel great about doing it. I, I felt like this was such a precipitous drop that it almost was like begging someone to take this horse off their hands. They paid $775,000 for this horse, and he won an N1 exit Churchill 2 back. Now, okay, you can be mad that Churchill's turf course is gone. That's a course that your horse apparently liked, but it was an open allowance, first level. And what, two back? Now we're in for a tag. I mean, I know Eclipse wants to win at Saratoga, but... 775k purchase winning at churchill to this that i mean that's a scary drop it's a big drop too and dyna drive that day was it was 40 to 1 came back to win his stakes next time out so you like you could say it was a pretty good race there but yeah it, to me there's enough question marks here i do like the fact we get back to irad i think that helps out but i'm surprised it's 35 why isn't this horse in for 50 why like there's there's other places yeah. that you could end up running this horse so i agree with you i'm a little surprised on the drop i think the horse makes sense you kind of have to use it here if you especially if you're spreading out if you're going short you can chuck out aviano if you want but with spreading here i'm going to include the seven on my ticket but then i'm just going to go absolutely bombs away and that starts with a 10 horse uh sonic speed i think actually makes quite a bit of sense here uh at 15 to 1 so horse that was claimed four back. Now we're getting Brittany Russell here. We're getting fourth off that claim. But I really like that last race at Saratoga. And that's one of the keys from here. This, this horse has run twice at Saratoga. And you go see it and you're just like, oh, well, it's got one third. Doesn't really like the track that much. And it's like, well, you know, pump the brakes, right? The, the third was actually very good. It was five and a half, uh, five and a half furlong turf sprinting race where this horse made up a ton of ground late uh, and just missed by a length to Mass Murata, who turned out into a decent New York bred. And then that last race at Saratoga, I mean, everything that could go wrong for Sonic Speed went wrong. We were four wide on the first turn, five wide on the second turn. Uh, and Sonic Speed spill, still made up significant amount of ground. Uh, got bumped at one point down the stretch. So second time over this course, and, and like we're breaking from the tempo, so I don't love. We were in the nine last time and got that trip. I'm hoping the Pratt can find a way to save some ground. Because if so, I think Sonic Speed is good enough to improve significantly here and take this field down at 15 to 1. I didn't use. I'm not going to talk you off of it. <laughs> this field's a mess. Uh, I will say to this point, uh, the horse was um, within what a length, uh, length and a half of Chess's Dream. Finished third in that spot. Uh, Chess's Dream, it, you know, is it going to draw into this race? And if he does, he's going to be platooned way too far outside to really use. Uh, but you know, Chess's Dream is a horse that you are familiar with, which we drafted. Uh, one of the horses that helped us finish not last in the fantasy league last year, so or year before. So. Uh, nice to see it. if he drew in and had a better post. I think we'd both love to use him, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Uh, he is racing for Mike Maker. That leads me to the next horse up for me. The second pick for me, uh, American Pure on the rail at 12 to 1. Luis Saez, first time aboard. Maker, first time off the claim. First time trying turf. Why not? <laughs> Forward, fully placed horse, drew the rail. I, You know, 12 to 1, I'm willing to take a shot on this because it's it, it, I don't know. It, it's weird that, you know, the horse has got the synthetic form. The buyers aren't great, but the wind going two turns on synthetic uh, before that have very good effort uh, going two turns on synthetic. So I think there's enough talent there at this level. We can get it done. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, this, uh, the sire stands for 6,000. This horse sells for $200,000. I mean, that's, that's a pretty darn good jump up from a, a sire cost up to the, the, how much the gavel drops for, uh, you mentioned that the turf paradise races where you have the win over synthetic. And then we go and we run in Indiana, win an allowance there and jump right up to it. Not winners of three lifetime, not, not winners of two, not winners of three lifetime at Churchill going a mile 16th over the slop. I can, I like, there's so many reasons you can draw a line through that race. And then the next one, you're going a mile and an eighth at Saratoga. The horse gets claimed to a trainer that loves putting horses back on turf who had a work cost a lot of money. And Sias takes them out. You've got tactical speed from the rail getting a 12 to one price. Yeah. I'm using this one. I, you got to yeah. use this horse, right? Yeah. I mean, well, especially as uh, earlier in the, 
Uh, where, as Mark says in the chat, these close, these final cl claiming races at the spa are becoming as hard to handicap as state bred at Oakland to end those. I mean, sometimes you just got to throw a dart and say, this one connection makes enough sense at 12 to 1 uh, to go with here. So where else are you going with? I'm going to the bar after this, man. My three just <laughs> freaking destroyed by a 33 to one shot golden rocket. We're coming home for this three, six exact. It's looking great. It's looking great. It's looking great. And then out of freaking nowhere, this one horse just comes like a freight train on the outside at 33 to one. Unbelievable. And then is, is it going to be a Bob too? Oh no. Okay. It's a good, it's good half length. At least that makes my life a little bit better, but yeah. Uh, don't love how that happened. I would have liked that three, six exacta. Um, I can't believe I'm going to say this. I'm going to go with KP Systems Go, the three horse here with Ricardo Santana up, which is crazy for me on the Saratoga turf. But if he's, if I'm going to play Ricardo Santana, I want that 20 to one price. And that's what I'm getting here. And this is one where I, I trust Englehart to properly spot horses when it comes to this type of stuff. The race two back, draw a line through it. It was a mile and a half over a turf paradise. It was taken off the turf. So just draw a line through that one. Last time out, that was actually a really good race. And it was a $45,000 N2X. Um, Cheryl on in Lillian, whatever the winner of it had run big races. Ruse came back, just missed at Saratoga. There was a short price brown horse who ran fourth in that race. Dancing with the stars came back to win at Saratoga. It's been a productive race. And then if you go back to KP all systems, going back to the California races, there's like six races that beat this field. There is a, a plethora of those where if he runs back to that, I think he is good enough to win. You combine that with a 20 to one price. I'm willing to put Ricardo Santana on my ticket here on the turf. Yeah, I remember this horse all too well from his time in California. I, uh, yeah, oh, I can't I know. do it. I know. I hear you. But it, like, it, it hurts too much for me personally to use him. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying I, I can't do it. I've been, I've seen him do it too many times. This horse was four lengths off smooth like straight. Okay. I'm not saying we're going to resurrect that effort, but if we get close to that, it's good enough against this field. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yes, that is true. We got to dig, dig, dig deep a little bit. Uh, I've got one more horse I've got to use, and then you've got one last one as well. Uh, for me, I went with the nine cause to cruise. Brad Cox has a horse in here at 10 to 1. Hendrick Harmouche hopping aboard. Uh, I thought it's interesting. This horse really hasn't hit turf that often. Uh, the debut was terrible, but you can see that's the one time we ran for main special weight. Nope. In over our heads. Okay. Dropped down to maiden 20 at the, the horseshoe. Win on dirt. We go to synthetic at Turfway Park, going two turns. We get another win. So we back up that first victory with another victory. Still in for tag. Now we move up to starter allowance, run protected. And we've run protected ever since then. Those two first two starter allowance races became very close to winning. One was on turf. One was off turf on dirt. The other turf effort at fairgrounds, it didn't go as well, but the horse blew the start. And so you can be forgiving about that. You return to dirt, the horse's buyers are very nice here. If we can get back on the turf and step forward from those dirt efforts, it makes him a player. There's a lot of ifs, ands, or buts to make it work here, but this is 35K, now moves a three lifetime in Saratoga. You got to do that. Yeah, look, especially if you're price hunting, you got to try and figure out a way to do it. I, yeah, I get it. I understand why you're doing it. You don't get Brad Cox that price very often. So I don't I don't hate the use if you're trying to spread out and find a price here. I, I just I take a couple others over this one. Carmouche is an interesting uh, rider to be aboard, to be using him. I'll say that much. Yeah, you got, you would expect the horse is going to be forwardly placed with Carmouche. So maybe this is one that you're trying to inject a little bit more speed into because it's generally not been that forwardly placed. But well, I mean, we'll see because you think of Kendrick as a go rider, not a closing rider. So we'll see what right. they actually do out of the gate there and figure it out. I'm so pissed at this one horse. They don't even have – it's the Miami U. They got the U up. If we would known that, I might actually play the damn thing. Oh, the hunch play. Well, Jason had it. <laughs> way to go, Jason. J Jason, you want to host co-host the show next week? Jason, no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Very few to one. It's a good way to start out the race. Yeah. It wasn't overly used in tournaments either, so it doesn't completely kill me in my tournaments. As Mark says, Magic won't play Tyler Gaffleon, but Mike is playing Ricardo on turf. Uh, Mike also said no to Caravelle. Yeah, episode 400. It's it's cats and dogs in the harmony. I don't get it. Uh, I'll tell Mike, you, you none, of last... those, none of those would be on the, the bingo sheet. People would still be waiting here to try and hit bingo. We're 45 we minutes hit, no... the show. We did hit all of yours. I'm sorry. I forgot yeah, that we I'm one, mentioned I'm one, that. Yeah. one, three, four, seven, ten here in the last. All right. That's going to do it for this episode of the Magic Mike Show, episode 400. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate everybody for uh, all the fun in the chat. It's been a good time. We're going to put our tickets up, and you can. Uh, we'll go through this one last time for you, especially for the podcast listeners. We love you, too. I will start off 
I go two five with one four five seven with six nine singling nest the four horse and then one four seven nine. That's a thirty two dollar ticket. I'm feeling pretty chalky on Saturday. What about you? I'm gonna spend a little bit more. I'm gonna go to sixty bucks here. I'm gonna go two four five eight with one with six seven eight with four seven with one three four seven ten. Let's try and beat Ness. Let's see if Secret Oath can flip the tables uh, with some other people doing some dirty work instead of Secret Oath out there. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, on Saturday, if you're going to be playing Del Mar, tune in uh, at 1, 1 p.m. Pacific time. Excuse me. I'll be uh, on the simul. Excuse me. There it is. Simulcast show with John Lees. Uh, hopefully not doing that when I'm on, on air with him. Uh, but I've done it uh, w- once or twice a year, uh, pretty much every year. The COVID year, first COVID year doesn't count because nobody was allowed to be on there. But uh, it'll be exciting. So tune in for that one. The Del Mar Oaks is the feature race, 14 three-year-old fillies. And if you're watching live right now, stay tuned because uh, at 3 p.m. Uh, Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, Mike's full preview of the Del Mar Oaks is going to be live premiering on the YouTube channel. So tune in for that one. But It, Mike, it is a uh, full preview, too. I I, I went I, yes. I previewed seven horses out of that 14-horse field. I made you work for that one. You did. And it's my fault because I made you preview. We're, we're going to be doing Travers capsules for the horses. And I thought, you know, before today, I thought it was a smart idea to give one person all three Chad Brown horses. So Mike was uh, very excited about that one. Lucky winner there. It's my pay- my payback for that, apparently. Uh, yeah, so anyways, check that out. But definitely a, a really exciting race, a really exciting day. There's a $3.5 million. Um, is he son of Ben Leonard? I already forgot. No, son of Bernardini. A $3.5 million son of Bernardini uh, that's in training with Bob Baffert, who debuts Saturday in race five. Uh, at Del Mar might be my best bet uh, for due to best due to best bet due to bet daily. Speaking yeah, I don't, which, good day I don't, for that. I don't think you're going to be able to hit the threshold. My guess is this horse is going to be under three to five or under four to five. He's six to five on the morning line. It's a big field. He's going to be like yeah, you know, like one to five. Yeah. Yes. There you go. He will be like one. It's to five. okay. I got I got CFL games lined up because don't worry. Where's my guy? I, I'm with you, Mike. With Mark, you know. I like CFL it. You got to get back to that CFL. Dude, to bet daily, two and one again today, two and one yesterday, up four units for the week already, two days in. Uh, the Haltermans held it down today, getting two W's. So that was nice. Uh, my two year old for the Brad Cox barn stopped like a freight train after, after hitting a wall, going 21 and flat for the opening quarter. That was wonderful. I will do this if Magic will edit it. So, Magic, are you going to edit the St. Louis Derby if I do a preview for it? No, just tell us right now. I haven't looked at the race yet. I got to actually look at the race oh. if I'm going to do this. No, I don't have time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be spending Saturday on the train to Del Mar. Just remember that, Mark. One of us was willing to do the work. <laughs> the other one's just busy oh, drinking and wearing us, the whole time. <laughs> one, of us, one of us was willing to spend five minutes talking about horses. Oh, shit, I actually saw who was. Oh, oh shoot, what's his name? Uh, Rattle and Roll. Rattle and Roll's in the, Fair, the Fairmount Derby, the St. Louis Derby. I, I, I yeah. I, oh, Rattle and Roll, really? Man, yeah, see two races five, up there. Crazy. Listen, don't ever, ever guess, second guess Kenny McPeak's decisions with horses, okay? He knows what he's doing. Look what he did with Classic Causeway. Yeah, I mean, that worked out great. Won a, won a big-time stakes race on the turf. What more could you want? <laughs> uh, Saratoga Slim, good to see you, buddy. You're just a little bit late. Saratoga Slim is currently in Oslo, Finland, so uh, he's having a good time out there, it sounds like. All right, Mike, we can wrap this up. Episode 400 was a lot of fun. Uh, we appreciate everybody joining us. I thought I had one more question in here. Let me go look for it. Oh, boy. These, these are the ones that are always in trouble. Uh, the the sandwich versus – or is a hamburger sandwich debate has been raging on on my cell phone for three days now. It is ridiculous. In like four, we're, we're in three or four different text chains about it, too. <laughs> it, it's insane how wrong Dr. Tang is, and yet he still believes he's right and tries to pull other people in. No one's agreed with him yet. <laughs> Zero people think it's not a sandwich. He still hasn't found one person to say it. And well, I just, I'm waiting for these other people. To, he's trying it, to find it, them. It's not that he can't find people who don't agree with him. It's he can't find people to join his fight because I think the three of us are the only three who give a shit about it. I started telling uh, Mrs. Magic about it and she just shut it right down. She's like, no, just stop. It's not. And you're an idiot and just leave me alone. So it's not. Um, you're married to a not sandwich hamburger person. At least she's a miracle whip over mayonnaise person. Oh man. Oh yeah. Well, that's, that's, it's a given. Come on. <laughs> uh, as Slim, I told Slim, oh, I'm sorry. I said Oslo, Finland, didn't I? I meant Oslo, yeah. Norway. I told Slim that my, my uh, ancestral roots run Scandinavian. And he said, there's like a hundred dudes that look like magic over there. So yeah, that makes sense. Or you know, lots of blonde hair, blue eyed people. I got, all right. I got one question for us. Shit, where'd it go? Um, this is a good one. What is your worst or weirdest 
roommate story. I mean, I don't even know if I could tell this on air. Like that's, <laughs> I, I had a roommate that when we moved out of Las Vegas, the bathroom was the most disgusting thing I'd ever seen. I hadn't seen it for two years, like not even once for two years. I figured out where my lost Xbox controller cord was. We'll just put it that way. Like it was used to tie the, the shower frame up. Like <laughs> it was ridiculous. It was, it was I, absolutely wait, 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 wait. It, What was the Xbox controller being used for? The cord was being used as, to tie up the curtain on the... Oh, okay. <laughs> This is so back like, in the day when they had cords. Okay. Yeah, so the cord is like weaved through the whole thing. And then the, the controller is hanging down. So like he's pulling the controller to open and shut the curtain to the shower. And that was, <sighs> and that, that there was just trash around. It was just ridiculous, man. It was not, it was just wild, wow. wild. That's, I mean, that's some, pretty epic. Yeah. There, there are some fun, more, more safe for podcast ones that happened in LA. Um, like with just you just people waking up randomly that you're like, I don't even know who you are. <laughs> Welcome to my apartment. Like what's going on? You know, because when you share an apartment with three guys and it's like in, and Los, Angeles. in Los Angeles, and you're throwing parties in Santa Monica and everyone can't get home. And this is like pre the whole Uber and Lyft thing and everything. Uh, oh, shit. The, the people that walk out of rooms, you're just like, whoa, hey, what's going on? It's 11 a.m. How are you? <laughs> uh, so I haven't had that too many that, that many roommates. Um my time, many different roommates. Um, I will say, so when I lived in Florida, I did the Di Walt Disney World internship a long time ago. Vinny Bond from Real Dynasty Picks, he's done it too. And I'm, he's got some funny stories too. But um, the the campus housing they give you, it's always two people to a bedroom. And the roommate they gave me, bless his heart, a very nice guy. He came from a cultural background that wasn't uh, nearly as focused on daily hygiene as uh, our culture. And so that was, um, I won't say it was the word, well, it's the worst room because I really haven't made bad experiences, but it took my nose a lot of adjusting to be able to sleep through the night. Let me put it that way. Yeah. I don't know how else you like, and yeah. he was, a, um, if there was ever like a report of a wolf missing from the zoo, I was ready to call based off of what I saw, like in the shower drain every day. Like that was the kind of stuff I had to do. I never had like the, yeah, I never got to experience the random you know, train of people leaving everybody's rooms at seven in the morning while you're in the living room. I mean, we, for my buddy's 24th birthday, we hosted a costume beer pong tournament. And so it, it, was, it was called the Jensen Invitational. We had 35 people in our apartment. We had a backpack that caught on fire. Uh, we lost one of the knobs to the, to the stove. Um, our freezer door got broken. I, I woke up, walked out of my room and there were nine people sleeping on the floor on the couch out front. Like, we, we, we had a little bit too much fun for a while there. And it was it like, and obviously it's a costume party. So like two of them are Ninja Turtles. There was a, a, a George Washington and Martha Washington, like in the full garb that were sleeping on the couch together, spooning. Like you just walk out and you see some weird stuff because everyone's in costume too. So uh, yeah, it, it, uh, it was a blast, man. It was a lot of fun. Great way to spend, spend the, the early 20s there. That was, that was like mid to late 20s, actually. Now that I think about it, I was 27 when I moved to LA. So I wasn't even that young. I was just a train wreck. <laughs> Oh, boy. Well, this has been an enlightening episode. Seriously, thank you everybody for joining us. 400 episodes down. We couldn't do it without each and every one of you listening and downloading. Uh, giving us a like, up on the, or a like, a thumbs up on the videos for YouTube. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're continuing to see some growth. It got a little slow there to start the summer, but uh, we're picking up for Saratoga Del Mar. Daryl, I saw you ask if there'd be any Queen's Plate coverage. Yes, we've got a preview coming uh, first thing tomorrow morning, and I mean that. First thing tomorrow morning, uh, JD Fox joined me. We did the Queen's Plate, so you can uh, check out the preview for that. We'll be dropping. Um, he, JD Fox, is going to be on America's Best Racing doing live coverage at Monmouth Park of the Queen's Plate Day. Mike, kind of like what you got to do, exactly what you got to do with the Haskell Sticks. So a lot of fun, and, and make sure you check that out. America's Best Racing uh, .net will have that. Uh, any final thoughts before we get out of here, Mike? No, just looking forward to a good week weekend of racing. And then this, th I'm excited about Travers Day. We got a creative coming back. He's going to face Jack Christopher. That looks like a lot of fun over at Saratoga. The Travers is turning out to be a wonderful race. It's exciting to have one of these big days where it doesn't just look like ridiculous chalk in and out of every race. Like you could actually try and take a couple stands. So I'm excited for the Saratoga card next Saturday. And it, like, honestly, the Del Mar Oaks is a banger. You got to check that race out as well. 14 horses heading to the post. Spenderella's coming back for a first race back in North America. You've got four Diamatos in there, three of them with a legit shot, two of them with traffic trouble last time you can make excuses for. Yeah, you got one horse coming over North America to North America for the first time. Two out of maiden races that could take monster steps forward. Just a blast of a race to bet. 
Cairo memories leaving the Belmont Oaks. So, you know, no matter who she's facing, it's an easier company for. Her. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's a lot of fun. That'll be a premiere here in just a few minutes if you're watching us live. Stay tuned. Otherwise, we're going to get out of here. Thanks so much for joining us. Follow us on Twitter. I'm at Curtis Kellogg. He is at Summer Bomb 18, number one, number eight. Corporate Overlords at Racing underscore Dudes. I have no honest idea what time Blinkers Off will be on later tonight. Uh, Jared's got the boys, so could be very late. Just tune in for that. If you subscribe and hit the notification bell, well, then you get to find out when they go live. Uh, Mike and I will be back tomorrow, Friday morning. Well, morning at 9 a.m. for me on the Pacific Coast. Uh, 12 noon Eastern for Dudes Who Bet Daily. I've got some CFL picks loaded. I've got a long, sh or a long shot. i got an upset pick uh, brewing, so make sure you tune in for that one. Until then, I'm Magic. And I'm Mike. Thanks for joining us for 400, everybody. We'll see you for the next 400. The Magic Mike Show. Where you hear the experts speak. The Magic Mike Show. Tune into the show every week. The Magic Mike Show. You can trust the show is the bomb because it's being brought to you by RacingDudes.com.